You're about to listen to Pastor Bidimi Makmodi of the Well Oasis International. Exactly what's keeping him? We prayed, we fasted, we gave a seed, we separated ourselves, name it, we did it. We have done all that we know how to do. Jesus surely ought to have come two days ago. But here we are, Lazarus is dead. And all Jesus can say is, those of you who are alive, you now have opportunity to believe sure. So that's it. Do you recognize that Lazarus is dead? Some people are hurting because their brother died. What do you mean by this? This is not about me. Me, I'm still alive. What about the man that has died? Are you thinking about the things that died in your life? And you're thinking, oh. so all this righteous as the pastor have preached that I was for nothing. What was the point, Seth? Why were we just doing all of these things? Why didn't we just go to club two days ago? And wake up in a stupor like we used to do. Because this Bible and church thing ain't working. Why are we not just even free to live our lives the way we used to live it? Because sins it has been taken. That I've been trying to hold on to Jesus. It looks like the more I'm holding on to him, the more the guy is shifting. What exactly is keeping Jesus? Maybe he didn't come that day because by the time you start to see the conversation that he had with Mary and with Martha, they are Religion, let's use that word, was faulty. Because it was talking of resurrection. It was talking about her brother being raised. And this one was talking about the last day. Yes, he'll be raised on the last day. This one was saying, if you were here, Jesus had to physically be in the room. That's why some of us, somebody must lay hands on you. Because something tells if someone doesn't lay hands on you, you can't get well. Somebody must pray with you. If someone doesn't pray with you, you can't get well. All the exercises we go through. Yet in the end, the child died or Lazarus died. What do you do? When Lazarus dies. Let's see what Mary them did. Number one, when their brother fell ill, they ran to Jesus. That's the first way to start. So they did well. They ran to the right source. But he died anyway. So it is possible to run to Jesus and Lazarus will still die. Ha. Ah, where is the hope in this? I thought that this said today was about hope. But she's now saying that we can come to Jesus and Lazarus will still die. What's the point? What is the point? He died. Jesus said he's sleeping. What was the point? I wish I had an answer for you. Everything else is conjecture. The only reason Jesus gave for which Lazarus died. In fact, it was not what, why he died. It was what could come out of his death. What could come out of his death was that people would learn new ways to believe. But he never gave a reason why he died. And if I can come here a bit, I can just say to you that you may never have a reason why something did not work out. But it does not negate the fact that Jesus is Lord. You may never be able to understand why some things just didn't move. You did all that you knew to do and the needle did not move. It still does not negate the fact that Jesus is Lord. Because you see, Jesus did not become Lord so that your needle will move. Jesus did not become Lord so that the things you prayed about would happen. And this is the brand of Christianity we no longer want to hear. Jesus is Lord because he's Lord. Shikena, that's all. He's Lord because he's Lord. All this, when you come, you would, it's just icing on the cake. Because he said them in his word that he'll give us these things. We can trust him that he will give us these things, yeah? But if he doesn't give them to us, it does not change the fact that Jesus is Lord. He is Lord, he is Lord, he is Lord. So sometimes it just makes sense to surrender rather than go through the agony of trying to understand why something went wrong. Because from verse 20, you will see something. In verse 20, then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met with him, but Mary sat still in the house. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if that has been here, my brother had not died. If you had physically just been here, if when we called you, if you had come, I know that Lazarus would not have died. Do you know how we try to make excuses for Jesus? Why things didn't work? You know, we do that, right? But it didn't work because you use your left hand to put the offering in the basket. If you had just used your right hand to put the offering in the basket, that seed would have been received and you would have gone on to see the reward that you are looking for. The reason why it didn't work was because you used your left hand to put it. Wahala. Trying to become the defense counsel for God. Who 
no, no. That's not the way my God operates. If it did not work, it has surely to do with you. What if nothing was wrong with me? My brother was sick. I sent for Jesus. They could send for Jesus and they surely were praying. Yet he died. On top of that, Lazarus loved Jesus. And Jesus loved Lazarus back. So, in the end, God does not need us to defend him. Let's stop trying to defend Jesus. Oh, it was because you did it right. That's why. He... No, you could have done it to the T. And it will still not go through. And it doesn't make you a bad person. Neither does it mean that God had forgotten you. I struggle when people come to me and they want me to defend God. I'm not the senior advocate of heaven. Can't do. There are things that as much as you want me to be able to explain to you and make sense of for you, I can't explain them. I can't make sense of them. They happen, they happen, they happen. That is life. It is life. People die in life. Young, old, rich, poor, strong, weak, white, black, green, yellow. They die. That's what happens. People die. And that doesn't make God a bad God. God did not drop the ball because Lazarus died. Because we could have stood here and then the Pharisees were there. You see that Jesus, he didn't love Lazarus. If he loved Lazarus, he would have done something about Lazarus. The same way I don't want you to sit here and think, it surely is because God did not love me. That's why I did not. Who told you that it's the devil trying to say it to you? Do not listen to his voice. Oh, it surely was about sin. No, it didn't have to be about sin. Because the Bible didn't say Lazarus did nada. But because in our human understanding, it always makes sense to have a reason. So we can't deal with a God who doesn't give us a reason. But today I want you to submit. Because the point of faith, the point of surrender, the point of submission is that 80% of what is up you will not understand. And it's okay not to understand it. God did not call us to understand him really. We call him indescribable. We say no one compares to him. Yet every of his move, we want to be able to take it apart. This was God's move. And the best thing you can do is just submit to God's move. Will he come and change it? Hopefully. In fact, I pray that he comes and changes this thing. But if he doesn't come to change it, he still doesn't negate the fact that he is God. Neither does he change the fact that he loved us and he's loved us. With an everlasting love. Hallelujah. So Martha said if you had just been in the room. Then my brother would not have died. Let's see this conversation to the end. Jesus said unto her. Then Jesus said unto her. Verse 23. Thy brother shall rise again. Martha said unto him. I know that he shall rise again. In the resurrection. At the last day. I know. Jesus I know. It just means me that he had to die this early. I know definitely that he would resurrect. I'll see him again on the last day. And this is even better because this meant that we are in a group of Pharisees we are talking because the Pharisees believed in Jesus. In resurrection, the Sadducees didn't believe in resurrection. If this were the Sadducees, the story would have even been harder than it is right now. Matthew said, I know, I know, I trust. I am sure that he would rise because I mean he was your friend. You loved him. I just wish you were here so that you could have prolonged his life. Verse 25 is instructive. And Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. Did you see it? He didn't say, I make resurrection happen. He did not say, I know how to work resurrection. He said, I am the resurrection. What does resurrection mean as a word? To bring back a life. Is that what it means? And Jesus said, Martha, you are missing it. You are talking of a day coming. But right in front of you is the resurrection. You are talking of a day coming. You see, he didn't say, I will raise Lazarus. That's why I said that when you read further and you see what he did eventually by going to Lazarus' tomb and calling Lazarus forth, that can be exciting for you. But if you focus on that, you will miss the conversation. Jesus was not saying, I will make resurrection happen. He was saying, I am the resurrection. What was the conversation in Exodus chapter 6 verse number 8? I will give it to you for a heritage. What is the heritage? Heritage is life. Jesus said, I am the resurrection. I'm the life. You are looking for the things that can perish. 
You want to not, you don't want to die. Whether you live for 200 or you live for 700, a day comes and you die. But there is something that happens after that day. That is about where you are going. Will you have life or will you continue to be dead? Jesus was saying, this is not about Lazarus dying now. It is about what happens after now. And I promise you, your heritage, what Jesus was saying to Martha, was that your heritage, you and your household, is that I am the resurrection and the guarantee that you have life. And he said something, which is why I believe this. He said, he that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall live. So Jesus was saying, to be dead in your body is no problem. As long as you are alive in me. To be dead in your body is not a problem. Just, there's no wonder Paul could say, for me to live is Christ. And to die is what? He said, if I'm dead now, old news. Because I will leave all of you sinners behind and I will go and stay with God. So Paul was never afraid of death in his body. The scripture says, he said, do not be afraid of those who can kill the body. But they cannot touch the spirit. Because your life is not in the body. Your life is in the spirit. So Jesus said, I am the resurrection and I am the life. If you will be alive in me, even though you die and they bury you, you have hope. That's what I'm saying that calling Lazarus from the tomb was not a miracle. The miracle was in this place was, will you understand that in Christ, will you be able to catch this drift this evening, that in Christ you cannot die. Even if your body died, you cannot die. He said, I am the resurrection and I am the life. That's why when someone is sick, when they die, have you ever gone to a funeral and the dead man is crying? Have you ever been to a funeral where the dead man was crying? Because his body died. He's translated home. Now everybody say, I don't want to die. Praise God for you. Don't want to die. Do not die. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm not asking you to die. I'm just saying, you need to recognize that what makes you a dead person is not when you stop breathing. What makes you a dead person is when you don't have Jesus. That's what I'm saying. What makes you a dead person is not you laid down and you had a headache and they went to call Jesus. Your pastor didn't come on time or your pastor came, his anointing or her anointing was not enough and you still died. That's not what makes you a dead person. Why we should weep when someone dies for instance it's because they did not know Jesus. Then there is a problem. Wahala day, big time. If a man dies in the flesh and doesn't know Jesus. And if a man is alive and still doesn't know Jesus. Serious wahala. You know what they call double wahala for dead body. That's what it means. Hallelujah. Jesus said, he said, He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And then he said something. In verse 20 he says, he said, and whosoever liveth, believeth in me, shall never die. So if you are alive and you believe in Jesus, even when you are old and gray, which is a prayer we are all praying for all of us here, that will be old and gray, in strength and in health, very, very sound of mind, no dementia, no arthritis, no all of those things. Even when you get to that ripe old age and you eventually die, you are not dead. That's what the Bible is saying. And if right now you don't believe, if you believe in me, if you died, you are still alive. If you are alive and you believe in me, then you can't even die. Does that mean that we'll live forever? As in like continue to breathe forever? That's not what it means. It just means that the essence of you is hooked up to the life support of heaven. That part of you can never shut down. We are the well. We want to continue this journey with you. Connect with us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at The Well Reveals. Worship with us every Sunday at 7B Iche Chris on J Street off Abikeani Maon Street, Lekki Phase 1 Lagos. Time, 4.30 p.m. We are The Well, an oasis for revival, refreshing, and revealing. I am the resurrection and I'm the life. 
God said to Moses, I will give the land to you for a heritage. If you make the mistake, then you'll be looking for a land with brick and mortar. But when you go to Hebrews, you will see that Abraham was looking for this land that was promised. But the Bible said he was looking for a city. What kind of city was he looking for? A city whose maker and builder was God, not a city built with hands. The heritage that God was talking about is not this brick and mortar. Brick and mortar is good. The brick and mortar is your inheritance inheritance you bequeath to your children. But as you're giving them brick and mortar, you're building buildings for them. You are leaving them cars. You're leaving them money in the bank. Please leave them a heritage of Jesus. Because no matter what else is taken from them, that can never be taken from them. If they are dead in their body, they still have that. Man can take it from them. If they are alive and they have that, even when they die, they are still alive. We are measuring on the minor. I am the resurrection and I am the life. Jesus was not saying, I can make resurrection happen. Which is why I see content that marching to the tomb to go and call Lazarus forth was for the benefit of the people living had nothing to do with Lazarus because all that's why even though Lazarus stopped breathing Lazarus didn't die why? because Jesus loved Lazarus Lazarus loved Jesus back he already had life that was why it was easy to call him forth that's why we not go to he went there he went to the tomb you know he called Lazarus come forth I'll leave that to another day but today the point I want you to never forget is that he that has Christ has everything. Because everything flows out of what? Life. And if you have the life of Christ, then there is absolutely nothing that you can't have ultimately. That's the conversation that we're having. The question is, do you have Christ? Are you in a relationship with him? Do you know him for yourself? When we come every day and we make it about the cars that we want to buy, we make it about the houses we want to build, we make it about the connections that we need, we make it about everything but what it is. Those things are just addendums. They are just icing on the cake. The main crust of this thing is that the life in Christ is a life that lasts. That's the life. That's why he said, I am the resurrection. He didn't say, say, look, inside of me, that is, you can die a thousand times inside of, as long as you are in me, you would live each time. When we started this journey, we started from escape, where God said, I will bring you out of Egypt. And Jesus said, I am the door or the gate. And we looked at that, those scriptures and we did say that when God brings you out of Egypt, his plan was to bring you somewhere. And today, we see where all of this journey was headed. It was headed to life in Christ. The next week after we looked at escape, we went to behold. And we did see, and what God said, he says, I would take you. I will rid you of the burdens of the Egyptians. That was what he said. I will rid you of the burdens of the Egyptians. And I said that there is no slavery like mental slavery. That even if they were physically taken out of Egypt, unless the lifestyle and the mindsets of Egypt was taken out of them, that they would still be slaves even if they were walking free. In in behold, we said that there is a way you must see for you to recognize that this is not just a conversation. This was deliverance. That the mindset that made you think that you are only alive when you are breathing needed to be taken away from you. So that you will recognize that when you are in Christ, even when you are dead in your body, you are alive in him. Then next week we went on to pay in full. And I was saying to you that you see, when Jesus said, and uh, God said, he said, I will redeem you with a great outstretched arm. That was how he said it in Exodus chapter 6. And Jesus stepped up and said, I am the bread of life. And I was telling you that Jesus paid the price. He paid by his blood that was shed and by his body that was broken. Just so that your redemption will be what? Validated and you can take it anywhere. Now think about it. If he paid with his blood, if he shed his blood for you and his body was broken for you to bring about your redemption, do you honestly think that he will leave you in a tomb somewhere? What would then be the point of him laying down his life if in the end you died like everything else? The fourth week we looked at rest. 
where God said, I will take you to me as a people. In Exodus chapter 6, verse number 7. And Jesus stood up and said, I am the good shepherd. And I said that in elaborating that Jesus went on and he explained why he is not just a shepherd. He's the good one. And I said, because the good shepherd does what? He lays down his life for his sheep. Praise Jesus. For you to understand that it is because Jesus has laid his life down. That's why today you can think it. You can say it. That you know you can look at people and say I can never die. They will say the cheek of you. How can you say you can never die? But that's what the Bible says. You can never die. Your body may die. But you can't die. Because the essence of you is not your body. It's not your flesh. The essence of you is the spirit of God in you. Do you get it? And the Bible is very clear. When the body dies and it doesn't have a casing for the spirit anymore, what happens? The spirit returns to God. We went from there to entangled. And in entangled, God said, I will be to you a God. Then you will know. And Jesus said, I am the vine. Without me, you can do nothing. And I said that until your life and the life of Jesus become one. Because in John 17, he said, as I am one with the Father, so you should be one with me. Do you understand it? And I said that unless you become a mesh with God, unless there is a fusion, that then this journey is a waste of your time. Now think about it again carefully. If you are fused and you are one with God, or you are one with Jesus, like he said, without me you can do nothing. I am the vine and you are the branches. Is it possible that you will die and he will be alive? Look at the logic. I'm just trying to flow it for you so that you can see it. That from seven weeks ago we've been coming to this point to see that we have life and life more abundantly because Christ is in us. Hallelujah. Last week we looked at home. And in Exodus, what God said was, uh, that was chapter 8, the A part. He says, I will bring you into the land. And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And we looked at this a lot. And I said that you will bring you to a land. And you see, the reason, there's something I want to say to you, and I need you to hear me. I don't know whether it's part of it, but I think it's part of it. Do you know why Jesus' resurrection is different from every other resurrection? That was why he did not say, I will be resurrected. He said, I am the resurrection. Because every other person that was resurrected in the Bible, that was raised from the dead, whether he was raised by man or he was even raised by Jesus, guess how they ended up eventually? They still died. Jesus was the only one that resurrected and never died. And here he's saying, see, I am your life. I am your life. When I talked at home, I said that he will bring you to a land and Jesus is the way to that land. And I said, Jesus is the truth that leads you to that land. Because the Bible says God exalts his word above his name. So as long as you know what the word of God says about you, you will be fine. They say you are about to die now. You say, no, with long life he shall satisfy me. They say you are too insignificant. You say God does not save by many of you. If he wants to save me, he will save me. If he will use me, he will use me. They say you don't have what it takes. You say the Bible says to me, I am the head and not the tail. They say you are too weak. You say, well, his strength is made manifest in my weakness. Why? Because you heard the word, I will bring you home. Now you may begin to think that home means that you will win the American visa lottery. You may begin to think that home means you will move away from Alabado where you live and come to VGC or somewhere exotic like that. Or maybe banana or what's that one on top of the water? <laughs> to each his own. Praise Jesus. But you may think that that is the land, some exotic place where you can build the mansion and put your name on it, something villa. But I'm saying that the Bible says, that you should not gather your treasure and put it in a place where moth can eat or water can corrode it. A life that is hid in Christ is a life that endures. Whether that life died at 10, when it was not, the breath was snuffed out of that life at 10, or the, that life lived to be a 100. Impact is not measured by breath. Impact is measured by the life that you carried on the inside. And until we understand this, we will not stop to fear. There are things that we should be doing today. We are not bold enough to do them because you are afraid that you will die if you did them. Long ago, I know of a man who refused to build in his village. He said the sufficient for him that if he built in our village, he would die. 
So my father said to him, build in the village and die. At least we will know that you died because you built in the village. Because this one you are going, you will still die and not build in the village. You don't want to be that person that ultimately, you were so afraid to build in the village. So you didn't build because you didn't want to die. You still died before 60. They will bring your cops and they will be looking for someone's house to put you in. What was the point? Didn't that better that they, you built that mansion? They take a whole room and bury you inside. Nobody can stay there anymore. If they are afraid. Is it not better for you? My point is we can't walk with God in fear. The Bible says that he whom the son is set free. He is free indeed. Have you ever wondered what you have been freed from? You have been set free from fear of death. Chief amongst them. Paul said it will live is Christ. That is gain. Any which way the earth swings. I will be fine. Jesus said if you believe in me. Even if you die. You are alive. If you died while believing in me, you did not even die. This is a mystery. But it's a mystery that you would do well to understand. So that you don't run around in fear. For you to know that everything that Jesus did, all the plans, all the intentions and all the interventions, were meant to bring us to a place where we are so sure when they stand and they are talking. Have you ever been where they be talking? I look at them and say, ah, okay. You know me, I, I, I jump and pass. You know, it sounds, sometimes it sounds cheeky. We're talking about what everybody is suffering. You say you jump and pass. So I jump and pass now because I'm in this world, but I'm not of this world. Yes, I agree. You saw me yesterday. You are looking at me today, but I don't belong here. If I don't belong here, exactly how can this economy determine where I'm going? Or what I have or what I cannot have? When you talk like that, they call you arrogant and they call you cheeky. But if you truly know who you are in Christ, that's why humility is a virtue. If you truly know who you are in Christ, sometimes it can be almost impossible to be humble. Because when you check it and check it and check it, your life is just on that trajectory that nothing can touch. And until you have that assurance inside of you, you will constantly be weak. You will constantly be beggarly. Everything will be a negotiation with the devil. And I'm saying no today that you need not negotiate with the devil. Unless you are eating with him. Albeit even if it was with a long spoon. If you are eating with him, then you need to negotiate with him. You are, you are comrades somehow. But as long as you are not doing anything with him, when you show up, the Bible says believers shall be created and they shall be established. Guys, there's nothing to fear. The word, if it likes, let it turn its head upside down. You make it. It's the reality of who you are. I am the resurrection. I am the life. I am the resurrection. I am the life. Even if you died, you live. But Jesus closed that conversation in verse number, I believe it's 26 or 27, with Martha. He said, do you believe? And that's where I want to close it this evening. Do you believe? Because if you don't believe, I can't help you. Because all of these things we carry by faith. But that is your Bible. Not to fear. Not to walk in ignorance. Not to begin to go around thinking, how will my own end? Because how it will end is that it will end in Christ. Because he is your resurrection and he is your life. But do you believe? And this evening, maybe it's a good time. Just do a quick, a one minute audit of yourself and say, do I believe? Is this sin that Stabi is saying? too ridiculous for me to believe? Is it too incredulous for me to believe? Is it possible that even if I died in my flesh, I'm not truly dead? Is it possible? Can I believe this? If you do that quick order and you can't believe it, then you want to quickly begin to talk to God. Help my own belief. Because I need to be able to think like this. I need to be able to stand. I need to, because that's the only way you can issue the crease. That's the only way you can set the tone in the atmosphere. That's the only way you become the ruler that God has called you to be in the peace of the earth. Do you believe? Yes, Lord, I believe. Better help my own belief. Father, we give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Thank you for loving us so much, oh Lord. Thank you for loving us simply because you do. Daddy, we give you all the praise in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you for listening to Pastor Bidemi McMordy. Connect with us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at The Well Reveals. We are The Well, an oasis for revival, refreshing, and revealing.